I extend a very warm welcome to our honorable uh, and coordinators, Dr. Nirmita Malhotra, ma'am, and Dr. C. P. Vishwakarma, sir, along with our eminent speakers, Dr. Salish Agrawal, sir, and Colonel Sanjay Shivastav, sir, along with all the other dignitaries present here in this web space. It is our honor to have you all with us. I welcome you all to the webinar on next generation defense technology organized by University of School of Information and Technology and University of School of Engineering at Gautam Buddha University, Greater Noida. This webinar was inaugurated yesterday and speakers from track one to six threw light on new technologies used in the field of defense, such as artificial intelligence, along with the fact that our defense science and technology investment enables us to encounter military threats and to overcome any disadvantages that adver and adversaries that may seek. It also extends to policymaking options available to the policymakers, including options to, other than warfare to promote stability and prevent conflict. Science and technology helps us to counter special threats such as terrorism that cannot it cannot be um, countered by conventional war fighting skills. They underpin intelligence capabilities necessary to access all the dangers our nation faces. Today, we all are here to discuss track eight, that is next generation building technology for military camps, barracks, and other facilities. Moving ahead, I feel privileged to invite Dr. Nirmita Marotra an architect, urban resilience expert from School of Planning and Architecture, New Delhi. She is the founder and head of department in, of architecture and planning in Gautam Buddha University. I invite you, ma'am, to speak on the theme. Thank you, Pragya. So, respective uh, dignitaries, eminent speakers, uh, participants, delegates, faculty members from Gautam Buddha Universities and other colleges, and dear students. Very good morning to all of you. It's a proud privilege to welcome um, you all here in the track eight of the second day of the webinar on next gen technologies in defense. And we are talking on next gen building technologies utilized in defense in, um, and otherwise. In fact, when Vice Chancellor Sir initiated the idea of bringing all the upcoming technologies and the advancement of their usages in defense sector, I remember the work of Mr. Ravind Kumar from Defense Laboratory Jodhpur, who has pioneered in phase changing materials and particularly for the defense forces operations, uh, which are operating in harsh, harsh weather conditions of deserts and in cold climate. Phase changing materials provide thermal energy storage in most natural way and can reduce the CO2, CO2 emissions from fossil fuels or air conditioning units otherwise used to obtain the comfort conditions. Similarly, there are many more uh, advancement in technologies, for example, the terrain management, where significant application of this uh, are visible, particularly in a vulnerability atlas produced by BMTPC for earthquake, flood, tornado, etc. And as we all know, our first speaker is from Building Material and Technological Promotion Council, BMTPC, which is the Ministry of Housing uh, Affairs uh, Unit, uh, Dr. Shailesh Agrawal, Agrawalji, who has pioneered in working on these advanced building technologies for disaster safe and green practices. I welcome you, sir, here. And second speaker is Colonel Sanjay Srivastav. He is also a disaster management and climate resilience expert and will deliberate on both the issues, particularly for operation of defense forces. I once again welcome you all here and also convey my profound gratitude for sparing time and accepting invitation on such a short notice. Thank you so much, sir. Shall I start? Yeah, you can invite me. Um, 
I am profusely overjoyed to take this opportunity to introduce you all to Dr. Selesh Kumar Agrawal ji. Sir is designated as Executive Director of Building Material and Technology Promotion Council. He is working on the mandate of affordable housing for all under Pradhan Mantri Awas Yojana under the Ministry of Housing and Urban Poverty Elevation. focusing on sustainable technological solutions for faster and cost effective construction of housing suiting to geoclimatic and hazard conditions of the country his current areas of work include alternate building material and construction technology disaster mitigation management skill development capacity building project management and consultancy so has devoted a good 20 years of his life to building science and technology in the capacity as a scientist at CSIR specializing on earthquake engineering structural dynamics computer aided structural analysis and design societal based research and development project he has penned down a uh, part of his knowledge in the form of 100 research papers including vulnerability atlas of india he is a proud author of five books besides being a renowned speaker in alternate technology disaster resistant construction i welcome you sir to give your precious input on innovative construction system for mass housing thank you uh, thank you pragya and uh, thank you nimita for calling me for such a important webinar am i audible to everyone yes sir yes sir and so today i am going to take you through uh, take you through to a different uh, area or arena which is uh, construction systems uh, for housing and uh, as all of you know when uh, whether we talk about defense whether we talk about any 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 heavy charge uh, housing is uh, one of the important uh, thing as we call it roti kapra or makan so i am going to talk to you about housing technologies and uh, yesterday when i was attending your inaugural session uh, everybody was talking about iot and other new generation technologies and believe me in housing as well uh, new generation technologies uh, uh, have come in and uh, the, the present government of india is trying really hard uh, to mainstream these technologies to make these technologies um, as the technologies for the future construction so when i talked to professor nirmita i thought it would be apt for me uh, to talk to you about these emerging construction systems and when i tell you this uh, it is very relevant for uh, you know defense or armed forces i am working hand in hand in, uh, with defense organizations as, as well you know um, a few um, years back i worked with uh, you know uh, mes military engineering services they have a married accommodation you know the department where we suggested them uh, a new technologies for um, married accommodation similarly we worked with border roads we worked with you know uh, I, if i can uh, you know tell you a um, uh, lot of new structures have come on across the border um, and this side also you know we need to create houses and structures pretty fast so there are construction systems which can help build the, at a faster rate without uh, compromising structure and function so i thought it would be very relevant for armed forces and uh, uh, people around who are attending the webinar to know about these technologies and i'm very proud to share with you that uh, the government of india uh, at their own are you know um, propagating promoting these technologies and uh, you know government departments are the first who are uh, actually implementing these technologies in the field um my presentation is slightly large but i will uh, leave this presentation with uh, nirmita so that uh, it can be distributed to all of you and i'll try to uh, finish um, in the in the time given to me so before i start uh, the dear participants students uh, dignitaries and uh, defense personnel uh, let me just tell you why it all uh, we want to you know in every sphere of life uh, whether it is housing whether it is building infrastructure or defense we need to you know take a paradigm shift and we need to uh, uh, bring uh, new things uh, which are sustainable okay so same is the thing with the uh, uh, building and infrastructure because we are uh, uh, urbanizing very rapidly and if you can see on the left hand side the graph which shows that in 2011 census uh, out of Uh, uh, 1.2 billion uh, uh, people living in india 380 million people live in cities which is 31% and by 2030 we would be 40% urbanized and by 2050 uh, 50% of india will uh, be will be living in urban areas so that would amount to 800 million people 
and uh, you know to cater to this growing population india has to build 600 to 800 million square meter uh, urban space every year uh, till uh, 2030 and um, if you don't understand 600 to 800 million square meter that is uh, that is equivalent to building a new chicago every year so if we have to you know build at such a faster pace do we have technologies do we have material do we have enough natural resources do we have enough skills do we have enough uh, um, you know equipments machinery and uh, manpower um, uh, to do these things and um, in the backdrop of climate change can we uh, um, you know continue to work uh, in a business as usual manner the answer would be no so we need to shift uh, our gears and we need to adopt uh, the new gen uh, technologies so that was the the background uh, with, you know with that background we thought that we should bring in uh, some new technologies and also if you see in the right hand side there are few statistics written uh, all of uh, us are working very hard to take india to 5 trillion dollar economy at present we have 3 trillion dollar economy and if we want to take it to 5 trillion dollar economy our sector that building sector has to play a very important role as all of you might be knowing that uh, Five to six percent um, uh, GDP is being contributed by this sector, construction sector, and uh, therefore also you know our cities contribute. These are uh, cities are also known as uh, engines of growth, uh, economic growth. So uh, they contribute around eighty percent of GDP. So our cities need to be receptive, innovative, and uh, productive, so as to have sustainable uh, growth to ensure better uh, quality of living. So all uh, all these things trigger. Uh, that we need to you know uh, switch over we need to you know uh, think out of the box and uh, you know uh, leave that business as usual approach which i will explain you in sir next. aapka thoda sa voice break ho raha hai if you can slightly uh, slow down so people will understand okay. okay okay so i will go to the slightly slow so with this background we thought that uh, we need to introduce some new systems which are sustainable which can help build uh, the faster and uh, without uh, sacrificing uh, you know structure and functional performance okay and also the, at present we are adopting uh, a strategy uh, which is called 3s mantra and uh, this is the the present uh, government's mantra that always believe in skill scale and speed so uh, dear participants please remember this uh, 3s mantra is nothing but skill scale and speed speed is one of the most important parameter whenever we undertake any project and in Times to come, speed is going to play the most important role. Okay, so always remember is speed. Scale is another thing. You know, most of the time when we compare our country with other countries, we forget uh, that our scales are. You know, as I showed you, that by 2030 we have to build 600 to 800 million square meter space. So our scales cannot be compared with any other country. like uh, if you start comparing vaccination even in, in this covid time you know the kind of vaccination we require and the kind of vaccination we are doing it is unheard of and you know our honorable minister always say that the urban renewal schemes being undertaken by india are uh, largest schemes ever thought in the world so scale is also very important when we talk about uh, in indian context and skill uh, dear friends if we want to build new young india uh you know next year we will be we are completing 75 years of our independence so we need to bring a special set of skills and for that i also compliment gautam with the university uh, uh, who are talking about uh, new gen uh, technologies and new gen technologies as i told you are not required only in the sector of defense but in every sphere of life in every sphere of life we require new gen uh, technologies if we want to build uh, a new young india so always remember dear participants this 3s uh, strategy which is we require special set of skills our skills are you know, totally different we require you know like if i talk about housing uh, i will show you a slide our skills are you know unthinkable nowhere in the world you can find that kind of shortage and that kind of requirement and speed uh, take it from me in times to come uh, it, it will not be cost it will be time so you need to complete the projects within uh, given time and at a faster rate let me tell you uh, i come from ministry of housing and urban affairs and uh, i am working uh, in a scheme called pradhan mantri awas yojana uh, urban and uh, let me share with you that uh, the, the government of india by next year which is 2022 when we will be 
completing 75 years of our independence would like to uh, give pakka house and there are two components of this scheme one is dealt by our uh, ministry which is housing for all urban uh, or you can uh, call housing for all shahri and the other scheme is being uh, uh, operationalized by ministry of uh, rural development and which is called pradhan mantri awas yojana grami or rural so <clears throat> under pradhan mantri awas yojana urban uh, it is envisaged to build 11.3 million houses and uh, i'm so proud to tell you that we have already achieved this target we have already <coughs> sanctioned 11.3 million houses and this 11.3 means 1.13 crore houses uh, was the shortage when this mission was started and similarly in rural rural uh, 10 million houses need to be constructed by uh, next year and um, uh, as of now the progress if you can see uh, 84 lakh houses have already been grounded out of which 50 lakh houses have been completed and uh, they have already been occupied by the beneficiaries. And uh, I'm talking about new gen technologies, I'm talking about these innovative, sustainable, fast track construction systems. Uh, out of these uh, sanctioned houses, around 16 lakh houses are being constructed with innovative uh, technologies, which I'm going to introduce to you in slides to come. Uh, before I introduce these new construction systems to you, uh, let me just tell you uh, what is business as usual approach. Uh, if you are civil engineers or architects, you would you are very well aware that uh, the, the if you see on right hand side uh, the, the the two pictures, normally uh, the conventional construction takes place in the, uh, such fashion. Okay, either we make the buildings brick by brick, so we make uh, walls uh, using bricks, or otherwise we have RCC frame construction where we do. Uh, beam and column uh, of RCC and then we do the infill walls to bricks. So this is a business as usual approach. And uh, 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 let me tell you that uh, these are slow track construction and um, make use of natural resources. Um, also uh, labor intensive, uh, waste is being generated. Uh, there is emission of greenhouse uh, gas gases when we talk about uh, bricks or cement uh, for that matter. So uh, the, uh, over the years, these systems have become unsustainable. And uh, because um, because of this, uh, the, these things, uh, we need to bring in uh, some some innovations in the construction um, practices we follow. Uh, so as you can see here, there is too much dependency on cement, aggregate, and water. And also, uh, some of you might be knowing that nowadays sand is a scarce commodity. Um, in few states already, uh, there is ban on uh, mining of uh, sand. Like I talk about Tamil Nadu. Uh, you don't get uh, sand, river sand there, so you have to use query, uh, query sand or stone dust uh, as sand. So um, the water is another commodity. And let me tell you, sand, uh, I always tell in my lectures that uh, if you go to the Google and just write sand, you will be amazed to see that uh, it is written that uh, next world war would be on sand, not on water. You know, earlier uh, we used to tell uh, that the next world war will be fought on water because of water scarcity. But let me tell you, there are very good films available on Google which tells you, uh, you know, how grave is the situation when we talk about this uh, fine aggregate percent. And that is why nowadays you might have seen in newspaper, in, um, you know, uh, even in uh, media, uh, in TV, uh, there, there are ads coming of uh, manufactured sand. Uh, there is an ad in uh, Astra which says that uh, uh, the, the, there are machines available, automatic machines, which will uh, give you sand. And that is why, you know, most of the cement industries uh, and the, the cement manufacturers, they are also manufacturing sand. So uh, some of you who are of my age, uh, just think about it. When we uh, studied our civil engineering, we never thought that sand will also be manufactured. But now the time has come when we are manufacturing sand. So this is called M sand. Everywhere in times to come, you will not get any river sand. You have to resort to uh, manufacture sand. And why it has happened? Because because of this business as usual approach and uh, the construction practices which are in vogue or which are in practice are, uh, um, um, you know, not resource efficient. Let me introduce another one. Same is the thing with cement. All of you agree with me that uh, cement, the production of cement emits a lot of greenhouse gas uh, gases and nowadays uh, considerable research has been done even in India where we're trying to produce concrete without cement. <laughs> so I will take just a pause here that now we are producing concrete without cement. That is called geopolymer concrete. And India already successful pilot studies have been done. And uh, 
um, now that uh, you know that material is ready to roll, uh, so we can produce concrete without cement. And why? So why all these things are happening? Because the present uh, practices are not resource efficient. Second, uh, also you know during COVID time, um, all the construction activities were at halt. Uh, because of, um, you know because of uh, paucity of skilled uh, workforce so uh, we need to uh, bring in industrialization in the system we need to take our construction to the factory okay uh, so that uh, the, in, whether it is vagaries of uh, the you know climate or whether it is festival season or whether it is shortage of uh, paucity our construction um, activities are not affected okay and third is very important that our traditional construction are not green all of you uh, know that if i live in delhi in delhi if uh, you know uh, during the uh, extreme uh, air quality uh, conditions uh, the, the construction activities are being stopped and why it is being done because a lot of dust and a lot of pollution being generated uh, during construction activities so we need to have construction activities which generate uh, less pollution and uh, i don't know whether you saw in newspapers uh, around a week back um, there was a ruling from supreme court that all the construction uh, projects which are taking uh, place in uh, delhi uh, of course um, you know there was a rider of uh, square meter built up area uh, they need to you know install air quality monitoring uh, equipments at their site which will constantly monitor the air quality um, of that project site and if the air quality exceeds more than 10% then the air quality being monitored at the station um, at other stations uh, uh, then they have to stop the, uh, the construction activity so such grave is the situation and uh, participants just think of it when we always uh, took the construction for granted we never thought of uh, you know our environment and think now the time has come that we have to think of environment we have to you know introduce the uh, systems materials and practices which uh, um, you know uh, which are amenable to our environment which are friendly environment friendly and eco friendly and so therefore that was the reason that is the background that was the objective uh, you know uh, with which uh, we, we we thought of introducing this new construction system this i already told uh, told you that if we want to build new uh, young uh, new uh, young india if we want to take india to 5 trillion dollar economy and uh, we need to introduce we need to do everything pretty fast we uh, let me also tell you that uh, whenever we use these business and you all of you know that most of the projects uh, are cutting time and cost over and let me also introduce time and cost over into you uh, if a project start uh, starts with a, a total cost of x by the time project is fin finished the the, the 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 cost escalates two times three times so that is cost over so you you initially you thought the project will be of 100 crores it goes to 200 300 crores so that is cost over run. and most of the projects you know if they were to be finished in 24 months or 36 months normally they exceed so that is called time over run. and now we cannot afford uh, to have these time over runs and cost over runs okay this already i told you then the green uh, so let me also explain you green aspects green aspects i always define in terms of these four parameters one is resource efficiency so resource efficiency means uh, see like you are using cement you are using bricks so you are uh, making use of natural resources and all of you know cement is based on limestone steel is based on iron ore and these are precious natural resources and the demand is always increasing and so there will be shortage of these materials so we have to have resource efficient technology so i don't say that don't use it with uh, cement and steel but use them optimally use them um, professionally in industrialized manner second is energy also you know energy is scarce so we have to introduce energy efficient uh, practices eco friendliness uh, um, uh, you know the, whatever we do has to be friend, you know has to be environment friendly so less uh, greenhouse gas emission uh, less carbon footprint and fourth is uh, health of the occupants again uh, this is another new term i uh, i know most of you know but as architects we never talk about health because whatever we do we we take it for granted that health of the occupant will be uh, uh, will be good uh, and let me tell you there there are, there are studies which say that uh, the inside air quality is uh, uh, more poisonous than the outside air because of the, the kind of paint, paints, varnishes, the kind of cement, and all these things we use. Uh, they emit the, most of the time they vitiate uh, 
the indoor air quality. So health of the occupant, health of the occupants is also very important. <laughs> this is a slide from uh, the Energy Research Institute, uh, which um, they have done a study uh, uh, in the Indian context, and they say that our building activities consume 40% of precious energy <laughs> resource. 25% of water and 40% of uh, natural resources. So precious natural resources, you know, major chunk uh, is being consumed by building and infrastructure activities. 40% of energy, 25% of water and 40% of natural resources. And at the same time, building activities contribute 50% to air pollution, 42% to greenhouse gas emissions, 50% to water pollution and 48% uh, to um, and generate forty-eight percent of uh, solid waste. Solid waste, okay. And um, you know, the, 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 we all know that India is uh, signatory to climate change uh, mitigation strategies, and uh, globally we have to reduce our carbon footprint. So, if we continue to have business as usual approach, our carbon greenhouse gas emission will double by two thousand fifty uh, by by you know these building activities. Okay, so therefore we require uh, these new technologies, and uh, I already explained you. Speed is one of the most important thing. Then green, greenness, affordability, and all those things can be clubbed into sustainability, safety. Again, India is a country. Uh, we have very interesting geoclimatic regions and geoclimatic uh, conditions. Um, uh, I specialize in earthquakes, so in India, you know, it's a country where earthquake can come anywhere. So we have to uh, bring in safety. Also, uh, safety of structures as well as the safety of workers. You know about COVID time, uh, uh, the safety was questioned uh, of the people who are working, even of the workforce. So safety, uh, speed and sustainability is very important. Quality, all of you know that uh, whatever we do, we have to produce quality structures. So quality control and quality assurance is also a very important thing. Okay, and uh, all of us know when we do construction on site or cast in situ construction, how quality is being compromised. Unless we have robust uh, quality assurance system in place, no matter whatever robust design you do, quality will always be compromised. So if you are having a robust PAKKA quality assurance system, you, you cannot ensure uh, good quality. So with these new technologies, because most of the work is being done in the factories or under control conditions, quality uh, can um, be ensured uh, to some more. Next one, let me also introduce life cycle cost. Uh, all of us, whenever we talk about any project or we talk about any building or any infrastructure, we normal, normally a question crops uh, to our mind, what is the cost? That cost doesn't have any meaning. That is initial cost, which is cost per square foot. But nowadays, you know, we need to talk about life cycle cost. And life cycle cost is nothing but summation of uh, this, that initial cost plus operating cost plus the disposal cost. Let me uh, tell you that the initial cost is one of the component of this life cycle cost, you need to bother about operating costs also because you know uh, all of us uh, know that uh, uh, the, the operating cost is much higher in terms of energy, in terms of greenhouse gas emissions and other things. Okay, so and you know as engineer, as an architect or as professional, if if I am constructing a building, once the service life of building is over, how the building is going to be disposed? That is also my responsibility, which we never think of. We simply construct the building and leave it, uh, leave it uh, to live its life at its own. But how it is going to be disposed of once its service life is over? Because if you don't have that strategy in mind, it, it is going to be detrimental to our uh, you know, uh, ecosystem or our habitat. So that is why government of India, uh, in you know, uh, four years back in the um, in the GFR general finance rules. The people who are working in government departments uh, must be conversant with GFR. In GFR, we have introduced life cycle costs. So all the projects you know, having you know certain built-up area need to talk about life cycle costs. So friends, as civil engineers, as architects, and um, uh, as other professionals, please understand that it's our collective responsibility when whenever we construct or create a new infrastructure, we need to talk about life cycle costs. It's not about initial costs or um, you know, minimize the cost of construction, but it is the cost operating cost of that um, structure or uh, that building of that infrastructure and its disposal cost. And that is why new technologies are important. Also, uh, you know, whenever I talk um, in any forum or uh, uh, um, at any uh, other webinars at all, we are always questioned about the functionality of these new technologies. People say that, sir, you are using uh, 
thinner walls, so you are using thinner slabs, so what will happen to fire, what about thermal efficiency and all. So let me assure you here, let me tell you here that these new technologies are nowhere less than the conventional construction as far as functional performance uh, are concerned or in terms of functionality of that building, whether it is thermal, whether it is durability, whether it is acoustics, whether it is fire and so on. Also, by introducing these new technologies, uh, you can considerably reduce uh, the energy use. Um, you can also reduce the water, where water is again a precious resource. Uh, greenhouse gas emission can be reduced uh, by 35% and uh, uh, you can reduce the waste uh, up to 75%. Because once you do with new construction systems, you know, they're, they're, uh, all of you know when you go to any site, um, construction site, you will find heaps of uh, you know, construction base. But when you we work with these new technologies, uh, you can reduce that uh, waste. This is again a very interesting slide for all of you. And uh, just, uh, I, I'll just pause for a uh, second. Just try to imagine at which level we are. So in construction sector, there are, um, you know, construction sector ha has uh, reached to level four. And uh, you try to uh, visualize that at which level we are or uh, how many levels you know exist in India. So there are, there you, as you can see, level uh, zero to level four. So there are five levels. Level zero is the level you all must be conversant with, where we, you know, gather or uh, we accumulate the material at the site. Then we call the labor supervisors to start uh, doing the work. So that is level. It is the most primitive where we, you know, uh, collect the material uh, at the site, procure the material at the site, aggregate cement sand and make the concrete. Uh, and then start uh, erecting the structure. Level one is the you know pre-engineered buildings, uh, the slice structures where you know you get the beams, column trusses uh, from the, the factory, and uh, then do those pre you know in the slice structures. So that is level one. And uh, level two. Uh, now I come to the level two where you know you can make the building components in the factory of concrete or of a steel, and then just uh, transport them to the site and then assemble them to erect the structure. So that is level two. And uh, level three, as you can see, the entire structure, you know, it's uh, the entire module or entire room um, can be made in the factory. And then just like Lego blocks, you, know, you must have seen when you were kids, what we used to do through building blocks, we used to make the entire uh, multi-story tower. You know, you can make erect a tower by putting those Lego blocks uh, one over other. Same kind of thing can be done in buildings where uh, you can Put, you can make these modules in the factory of uh, the entire room and then put one room over other to create the multi-story uh, tower. So that is level three. And level four is another level where the entire thing is done in the factory. Even the finishes, even the furniture, and even the services, everything is being put in the factory. So all you have to do, we, we call them plug and play homes. Okay, that you might be thinking that what, what uh, Dr. Agrawal is talking about, but this exists in India now, dear friends. Plug and play homes, you know. And uh, I always give the example in plug and play home of USB. Uh, US, USB is a plug and play device. So you put your USB um, uh, drive in, in your computer on your TV and you start seeing the photographs of film. Same thing can be done in housing now. You can get a plug and play home. So all you have to do is transport that home to your um, you know site and just uh, plug it or uh, you know connect it with services like water connection and electricity to start using that house okay that is the innovation which has uh, been done in the construction sector and let me tell you we have reached to level 4 in india we are not at level 0 at level 4 and i government of india at present uh, is doing this kind of work i will show you in a slide we are doing a project in rachi that is called lighthouse project where we are uh, doing this level three and level four and level two is everywhere in India. That is called precast concrete construction and level one, which existed in industry, industrial structure and is now being taken to, uh, uh, you know, uh, to residential sector as well. So all these things are very handy even for defense organization. And as I gave you the example, you know, um, you know, across the border, one fine day, you will find the structure coming up. And um, uh, this side, we think, that how, how come they have built this structure? We, we didn't find any construction activity. So what, what is being done? Everything is being done in the factory. And one fine day, you have the foundation, just bring those components and erect the structure and start using it. Uh, the same thing can be done. And there are umpteen number of agencies in India as well who are practicing this level one, level two, level three, and level four. And 
our attempt at Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs and BMTBC is to mainstream these technologies and, you know, right at the behest of Honorable Prime Minister. Honorable Prime Minister was quite interested in bringing this paradigm shift and or, or introducing these new technologies to the country. And that is why Government of India has taken the initiative and at our own, we are doing uh, uh, projects <laughs> where we are introducing these technologies uh, for the uh, uh, for for the rest of, rest of the rest of the people. Uh, also, we want to make these technologies as the technologies uh, of future construction in India. Okay. Uh, another term let me introduce to you. Um, nowadays, you know, earlier we used to talk about uh, contractors. You know, uh, you 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 ask the contractor that uh, please do this project. Uh, you go to the tender and ask them. To. Nowadays, there are specialized agencies and they are called DFMA or DMA. Designed for like you go to a uh, you know tailor and ask him to make a shirt or, or, or a jacket for you as for your uh, you know uh, as per your uh, fitting and so that is called customized tailoring or uh, same thing uh, you know buildings are now you know there are specialized agencies who work for you uh, as per your project requirements so these are tailor made technologies so all these technologies will fit anywhere everywhere so all you have to do is you have to share your uh, you know requirements and the, the, the project size and other things and there are agencies who yeah, so this is another term i wanted to tell you design for manufacturing so there are agencies who will do everything for you they will set up a plan for you as for your requirement bring the machines start producing the components erect them transport them assemble them give the building to you and then go out. okay and let me also introduce another word manufacturing of buildings uh, uh, again i will uh, ask you to think a bit Always we talk about construction of building and I'm talking about manufacturing of building. And if you can understand, I don't want to explain that. If you can understand the difference between construction and manufacturing, you will uh, understand what I'm talking about. Okay. So manufacturing of building. Now, let me tell you, in India, there are more than 10 agencies who are doing this. There are more than 10 agencies working in India uh, who are actually manufacturing the building. And when I say manufacturing of building means what I'm doing, I'm making the building in the factory. So it's like compare it with the, any other automobile industry or any other like uh, aircraft, how aircraft is being made, you know. Uh, so they put component like it, it is called assembly line production, where you put uh, component by components and then all, at the end you get the end product. Same thing is being in the buildings. So it's an assembly line uh, production or the slice production where you keep putting bits and pieces and at the end you get the entire module ready. And uh, it can be pre-finished with all services, with all you know, uh, WC, kitchen platform, sink, everything can be put, even electricity, electric, electricity installations and all. Also in India nowadays, it is very popular. You know, there is no need to make a bathroom or, uh, you know, your uh, toilet separately. There are pod elements available. So there are companies who are manufacturing these uh, pods. They are called pods. So, you know, your, your bathroom module or your um, the toilet module is made separately. All you have to do create a room and then just put that uh, pod in your house. So that is called prefabricated, pre-finished polymetric or something. Okay, and uh, let me show you. So this is the first uh, 3D printed building in India. Another new technology which has come is 3D printing. All of you know yesterday it was uh, talked about in defense also. It is very popular. You might have, if you go to any expo, you will find that uh, uh, they do, the, you know, the, it is called additive manufacturing where they have printers and through that printers they can um, create a plastic model okay by just giving a command same thing can be done in buildings so what you do in a computer you give a command and your robotics will start working and you will get the building printed and you see there are i know at least five starters and entrepreneurs who are they are young entrepreneurs and, and i know few of them are from iits and mit universities who have started at their own and they are they are into this 3D printing of buildings. And this is the example. I was also lucky uh, to be part of this uh, endeavor by LNT. You know, just uh, I think two months back, this building was inaugurated by Honorable um, uh, uh, FM, Finance Minister of India, of course, uh, virtually. And this is the building which was um, you know, printed by LNT. So we have gone to this level. And uh, I just wanted you uh, to understand that already these things exist in India. All we have to do is believe in these systems and start using them in our future. So with this background, I think this is the enough background uh, which I have given you. And uh, I just wanted to tell you why it is so important uh, to take up, uh, you know, my secretary always say it's not paradigm, it's a pole world. It's, it's a pole world. Let's take a pole world and uh, 
bring these kind of new systems which will help build India, uh, sustainable India, affordable India, resilient India. Uh, okay. So with this, let me just quickly introduce uh, you uh, uh, the technologies. Uh, uh, for the sake of uh, understanding and better comprehension, uh, I have divided uh, the emerging trends in housing construction into uh, these uh, three, four, five, six categories. Okay, one is homework system, another one is a stay in place homework system, uh, another one is I will introduce all of uh, them uh, to you one by one and uh, in a pictorial form. Precast sandwich panel system, light gauge steel structure system, steel structure system, and precast concrete construction system. Precast concrete construction system can again be divided into 3D volumetric construction where you make entire module or um, you can make the, the beam column and component based system. Um, okay. And uh, let me also tell you that uh, it's not that we are giving this lecture. I have produced, you know, enormous literature, enormous uh, supporting documents, films, audiovisual capsules on all these technologies so that uh, everything, uh, you know, this uh, reaches uh, to all the stakeholders, you know, in the, in the country. Uh, so what you can do is you can go to BMTPC or um, you can just put my name, Shalesh Kumar Agrawal. So we have a YouTube channel where the films, in fact, I have created the video lectures also on all these technologies, uh, explaining them uh, in detail. So what you can do, you can go to our channel, BMTPC, either type BMTPC or Shalesh Kumar Agrawal, you will get uh, the, the the films and other related literature um, related with these uh, technologies. So the end of literature we have um, we have also you can go to our website bmtbc.org or you can go to the ministry's website and uh, you will find literature which you can go. We have also created lecture in pedagogy. So uh, by going through that lecture or by going through that film, you can understand, you can comprehend the various nuances of this system. So if you don't understand something here, you can always go through those lectures. Okay. And then um, the, the, this slide, uh, let me just tell you that when, whenever we talk about new construction system or mass housing or anything, we are, we are not compromising on any, uh, any aspect as far as engineering and architecture aspects are concerned. And the prime importance is quality, time and cost. So uh, cost if we don't compare the cost with the conventional cost of construction, the systems will not work. So cost of construction, time and quality is very important. When we talk about quality, quality is always measured in terms of uh, safety um, against uh, not only against the, the, the live load and dead loads, but against the uh, other geoclimatic, uh, ge uh, geoclimatic hazards like uh, you know, cyclones, um, uh, like earthquakes or the, the high wind speed. And uh, when we talk about performance, uh, performance means function performance. It's the water tightness, it's the acoustic, acoustic, um, acoustic, uh, acoustic efficiency, thermal efficiency. And then, you know, every time it is being talked about that these are pre, um, pre cast or prefabricated systems. So joints are very important. So it's not only water tightness, but you know, efficiency of joinery is also ensured. And uh, fire retardance because of thickness and reinforcement, you know. Uh, let me also tell you here that whenever we introduce any new technologies, uh, uh, they need to comply with the, our Indian standards. So the technology may come from abroad, but uh, whenever we do undertake a construction or any project, uh, the, 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 the requirements given on the codal requirements need to be complied with. Also, the durability in, um, is also uh, you know, compared, and uh, durability means the life of the structure, service life of the structure, and duration of compound. Speed, I already told you uh, this. Uh, so let me give you another uh, thing that uh, uh, if anybody talks to you about cost of construction, now it is cost is not cost per square meter, but let's talk about cost effectiveness. And that can be measured in terms of quality, environment friendliness, and, and time. Okay. Uh, so with these new technologies, uh, th these are few, whatever I explained to you so far. Um, is clubbed here in uh, these benefits. You you ensure better quality of construction. There is a, a life cycle cost is minimized for low maintenance, speedy construction. Um, you know you get safer and disaster resilient houses. These are resource efficient, climate responsive. You know the construction practices. Uh, the better fire resistant, thermal efficiency, and uh, speedy construction. So with this, uh, let me introduce uh, you these uh, seven categories one by one. Uh, uh, Okay, so first is engineered formwork system. So I have a slide. Normally, all of you know uh, the, 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 the conventional formwork systems which exist. Uh, so, what, what is a normal the normal construction in normal construction? 
uh, the formwork is normally of uh, the plywood uh, or timber or of a steel. And formwork, you all understand uh, that when you make a building, you building normally uh, comprises of columns and beams and slabs. So for column, you make a formwork. It's a kind of a steel mold or um, you know uh, uh, a timber mold. And then you put a reinforcement, and then you do the concreting, and then strip off that formwork. So you all understand that how cumbersome it is. You first procure the formwork, and if you go to tier two, tier three cities or small cities, you will find they don't even use uh, steel uh, formwork. They use the plywood uh, formwork, and all of you know plywood with water gets wrapped and all, and so you get uneven surfaces. So all this is very untidy and uh, the kind of uh, unprofessional thing. So uh, instead of that, we can get the Customized formwork made in the factory. I will show you in this slide. So that is called uh, engineered formwork, and there are other two varieties which I'll explain you. So this is that uh, it uh, called engineered formwork system, and this engineered formwork is the name given by me. It is also known as monolithic concrete construction or ALU form. The most popular name is uh, aluminium formwork system. So what we have done, you can see um, the, from the, the the picture on the right hand side. What we are doing here is we are replacing the conventional formwork system with this customized formwork system of aluminium. So here, instead of having the formwork for beam, column, and slab separately, the formwork for entire module. So again, this is good for mass housing, where mass housing means where you have um, uh, units of repetitive nature. So mass housing means a similar dwelling units are being made. Repeatedly, okay. So, so for a representative dwelling unit, you get the, the the formwork made in the factory. So it is a customized formwork as per the size, shape of your dwelling unit or of your project, and then it is being done in the factory. And it is we it is aluminium formwork being light in weight. So now just think, we, we it is just a you know the, the, the change in the thinking. Instead of procuring the formwork of each element separately. We are getting the customized formwork made in the factory and then bringing that formwork, putting that formwork together in the reinforcement and uh, you know, uh, doing the concreting. And then uh, within three days, you can remove this formwork and take it, take it to the other floor. Okay. And another advantage is this formwork being of aluminium. Um, there are uh, repetitions from 100 to 500. And then once the formwork is used, then it can be. Um, sold back um, with a salvage value of 30 percent to that factory from where you have taken it, and this formwork is made in the factory. So that this is this comes with different names, as I told you. It is it is also known as monolithic concrete construction. It is known as aluminium formwork construction system or engineered formwork system. So it's very simple, as you can see from this slide, and it is assembly line construction, placing the formwork, putting the reinforcement, pouring the concrete, and removing the formwork and taking it to the upper. And this is the technology which is being used maximum in India as of now. So this is the, and you know, because sir, everything. Sir, sorry to disturb, you can do a little faster with, because we are tied up with the time. How much time I have now? Sir, as soon as, as, soon as you uh, okay. Uh, so, finish it. Okay, okay. So 10 minutes? Can I, I do have, it? Okay, okay. Oh, no. Sorry, sorry. So this is a monolithic concrete formwork system because I have a big number of sites. So I will just browse through. So uh, as you can see here, uh, so I think you have understood. Otherwise, what? Don't worry. You go to the my my my, my channel and just see the film on this. So this yeah. aluminium formwork is made in the factory, and then you take it to the other floor. And right now in India, hundreds thousands of houses are being constructed with this monolithic concrete. Concept. Again, this is a closer look. And this is again what I'm saying that uh, I always uh, tell that I don't only preach, I, I do practice it in the field. So there are hundreds of projects which are being done with this technology. This is one of our projects under Pradhan Mantri of Asrita where we have used more of the There is another variety tunnel form which we are right now using in one of the lighthouse projects. Another variant of formwork system is uh, insulated concrete formwork and a structural stay in place formwork system. So here this formwork is not removed but it acts as a part of the structure. So this is also known as loss formwork system. Um, uh, or a sacrificial formwork system, and this white thing, wh white thing which you see is a thermocone of high density. It is known as expanded polystyrene. So first, this uh, formwork acts as a formwork, and then later it acts as an insulation. So what you can see, this is a uh, closer look. Uh, so this is how it looks like. Again, I am doing a project uh, in Bhopal using this, and again, you can um, it can be used as a load bearing or non load bearing panels. 
So there are a number of companies who are doing it, and this is um, certified by us. Another variant of formwork system is structural stay in place formwork system. This formwork acts as an insulation once it is left in the structure. Here, this formwork acts as a reinforcement. So this acts as a part of the structure. Um, structure that is why it is called a structural stain based formwork system. So, this is also a loss formwork or sacrificial formwork system. It is galvanized, uh, you know, the, the galvanized uh, sheets of steel. And uh, as you can see here, uh, the, these are the, like this. So, first it acts as a formwork and later it acts as a ledger and um, shear reinforcement. Okay, so um, there are a number of companies who are doing it, and uh, you can see the, uh, this is one of our project where we have used this kind of uh, uh, framework system. And uh, another variant which has come is uh, stain place PVC wall form. So these are pre-finished wall form. So this wall is finished with PVC. So there is no need to paint it. There is no need to do the plaster and there are cavities. So depending upon your project, depending upon the height of your building, you can put the reinforcement, you can do the concreting or otherwise you do the light with concreting. So these PVC wall forms are pre-finished walls which are supplied to you from the factory as for your project requirement. And they have slide and lock or tongue and groove system. So what you have to do, you have to just you know erect these walls together and then put the reinforcement as per your requirement and start using your house. Okay. Uh, then uh, let me let me just not show you this. Uh, then there are you know drywall construction system. There are hundreds of drywall construction systems available in India. Just think, uh, dear friends, I will show you here. Yeah. Just think that can we replace this wall? All of you know how the, the, the walls are being laid. So you lay, lay them brick by brick, you put up platform, you call the mason and all, then first, you know, uh, put a layer of mortar, put the bricks, then you do the plaster curing and all those things. What about replacing this wall via this kind of drywall system? And this drywall can be of anything. There are hundreds of uh, companies who are doing these walls in sandwich panel. They can be done with puff panel. And, you know, in defense, it is very popular to have a puff panel, uh, you know, PPGI, it is called pre-painted galvanized. For puff panels, okay. So what you have, you have a galvanized sheets, profile sheets from the outer skins, and inside you can fill it with polyurethane or expanded polystyrene. Uh, there are a whole lot of things. So that is what I wanted to show you. So this is the classical system where you have brick and plaster. It can be replaced. This is the PPGI system which is being used in defense as well. So these you have a profile sheets, and in between you can have polyurethane, you can have expanded polystyrene, you can fill it with lightweight concrete, you can fill it with a, you know, um, aerated um, autoclave, aerated concrete. So, a whole lot of varieties are available because I don't have time, so I can't go into details, but I will show you in picture. So, this is one, one kind of uh, and I'll always remember this white thing which you see is a lightweight, um, you know, expanded polystyrene. And expanded polystyrene, if you fail to understand, this is nothing but a thermal pool of high density and it is fire retardant, it is, uh, um, it is chemically treated, and then you have a welded wire mesh, and then you can do the concrete. And any shape you can use it in slab. You can use it as a load wearing panel. So this is this is the panel which can be used as a slab. This is how it looks like. Okay. It's being used in a slab, and this is a finished building. So there are a number of companies. Again, you can go to our website and uh, see. Um, so there are uh, at least um, a dozen companies who are uh, doing this kind of uh, thing. Then another variant is this kind of panel, which are called, uh, and they, they, these are known as sandwich panels because you know the, a core is sandwich between. Outer skins. So these outer skins are nothing but calcium silicate boards or fiber cement boards. And this um, uh, this core is a lightweight uh, core, which can be. Uh, there is another concrete uh, which is known as elevated concrete, and that concrete is made with EPS beads. You know, you mix cement, sand, and EPS bead. Um, don't use uh, aggregates. So that is called elevated concrete. So that is called lightweight concrete. So these are fiber cement boards, and in between you have a lighter core. And of course, this is used as a non-load bearing panel. So this is also known as sandwich panels. This is another variant, which is which I was talking about. These are uh, EPS cement panels, where uh, you know you have a fiber cement board uh, as uh, outer skins, and uh, the, the, the the core is filled with EPS granule balls, cement, sand, and flagging. So that 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 composition gives a lightweight concrete. Okay, so going a little fast and uh, okay. Then another variant which is very important and which is very, very important for defense installations and I will uh, recommend this for a scene. In fact, yesterday only we were talking about, you know, after this COVID, we have to build our health infrastructure pretty fast. So we have just recommended the steel structural system for, uh, you know, um, creating health infrastructure, you know, quickly creating um, two bedded, five bedded and 50 bedded uh, uh, COVID isolation centers and other things. This, this is very handy and government of India is quite, um, you know, committed to pr uh, promote steel uh, use of steel in building the structure. 
So there are two variants. I will not go into details. All of you know. So we are replacing R60 by this kind of construction, and these um, the built-up sections uh, are being um, can be manufactured, can be produced in the factory. Bring it to the site and just erect them and put with infill walls. Okay, I will just. So this is again. Um, I wanted to show you. This is a uh, 10-story mall which came up, came up in Mohali in 48 hours, and it came up. Uh, this is a precast is uh, the structure again the steel structure and it was done uh, way back in 2009 okay since then we are promoting this steel uh, um, uh, construction this is again this is a work which we have done for um, you know this is again for defense we have done in doiwala you know they wanted to build um, you know mess and officers uh, um, you know assembly hall thing for uh, for their def, um, um, you know assembly halls and all so what we introduced we introduced this steel uh, structure with this eps wall panels so this this was done um, in Dehradun for defense. This is again um, the project done by us where we have used steel and AC panels. So, you know, after Hubert Cyclone, uh, I was uh, opposed to give them technologies for quickly rehabilitate uh, the, the victims of uh, Hubert Cyclone. So this was the technology we, uh, we, we suggested and the, you will not believe the rate was 1100 rupees per square foot for this. Uh, let me just um, uh, tell you, this is again a technology for inst uh, defense installation. You can use um, you know, puff panels with a steel structure, which will come very handy and can be done pretty fast. Another technology which, uh, which, uh, which, is, which has potential is light gauge steel. So the, this variant was hot rolled steel. All of you know this is a classical hot rolled steel. Nowadays, the steel can also be produced in cold form. So this is a thin, thin steel section and this is light gauge. And this can be recommended for low rise structures up to four story structure, light gauge uh, steel can be used uh, uh, for, for building. Uh, for building and so, this is how it is being done. Let me just show you. So, it is very handy and we are using it. This is again one of the technology which has potential for quickly erecting low rise structures. And what you do here is, as you can see here, this is an infill. So, this is a light gauge panel which is being made in the factory and it is a cold form galvanized steel. Thinner sections, so they are light in weight. The, you know, you, you have the advantage of lighter weight, 30 percent weight is reduced. And then, what you do, you put a infill of this kind. This is a fiber cement board which is put on both the sides, inner side and outer side. Um, and um, the, 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 the in between space can be filled with anything, it can be rock wool or mineral wool, or you can fill it with uh, the light. This is how it looks like. Then, this is again, uh, if you are going for. In fact, um, we were approached by MES and uh, they wanted to have this married accommodation project. We, we suggested a uh, precast concrete construction and this again uh, being used everywhere, even for social mass housing, this technology is being used. You might have uh, heard there was a news that uh, uh, in India there was a company, a team age, uh, who did a hospital uh, in Tamil Nadu um, in three months. Okay, A six-story hospital was done in three days, this precast concrete construction. And what we are doing here is we are making all these components off-site. So these components can either be made in the factory or you can have a mobile plant or you can install a plant at the, the site itself. In, in fact, um, uh, in Delhi, 70,000 houses for EWS category are being constructed with this precast concrete construction uh, by DD. So there is uh, what is being done. All the components are customized. All the building components, whether it is beam, column, wall panels, slab floors, staircases, the parapets, uh, um, the sun shades, lintels, everything is done in the factory. Bring it to the site, uh, transport them to the site, assemble them. You can assemble them uh, through wet jointing or dry jointing. And uh, so there are a number of variants, as you can see here. These are the components which can be produced. This is a project uh, of uh, uh, Shirke. Uh, with, this is a building which was done with Bikas concrete construction um, uh, in Delhi. This is a typical casting yard. Uh, I will not go into all this. Uh, uh, so there are, as I was telling you, there are a number of companies who are doing uh, this kind of work. Then in precast, uh, you can also use the pre-stressing. So hollow core slab is another technology. Hollow core wall panels and slabs. It is also um, uh, quite popular now in India, and there are a number of companies who have the. And so what you have to do is you, have, you can buy these hollow core panels and uh, you can use them as wall panels and slab panels. This is how it looks like. And again, uh, this is one of the projects which was done with hollow core slabs and PCAS concrete construction under PMFI in, um, in uh, Chhattisgarh for PWS house. Okay, sorry for being fast. And again, I wanted to show you this. Uh, this is again, this is a picture from India. Whatever pictures I showed you are the pictures from our projects or the projects being executed in India. So it's it's something which is which which uh, which I am talking to you is uh, not something futuristic. It is being done right now in India, and we want to mainstream that. 
and this is this is a project site of tata but it is in boysar outskirts of mumbai you can see here how these modules are being put one over other and i am also doing a project thousand houses we are making with this technology uh, in um, uh, rachi uh, it is known as a lighthouse project all of you can visit that project okay so uh, th th that will be all for me uh, i will just uh, quickly show you uh, th th this slide again please remember this website you know honorable prime minister was quite fascinated to see this technology transition and he asked us that why don't we transplant these technologies globally best practices to india so in 2019 we conducted a global housing technology challenge which was inaugurated by honorable prime minister and through that challenge we have created a basket of 54 new technologies and those 54 new technologies are divided into those six uh, categories which i just showed you okay and all these technologies are ready to use they have been certified by us they have been you know approved by ministry of housing and urban affairs and they have also been approved by cgw so as far as certification is concerned as far as their technical um, excellence is concerned they are um, already been approved and certified by uh, government agencies and uh, can be used state of it okay so that basket is ready for you so you can go to this website and download there will be literature manuals and other things related with these technologies just a slide for you there's those six categories uh, and these are the 54 new technologies and they have already been approved and what we are doing right now we are doing six lighthouse project at six different places i will show you a slide demonstrating these six categories uh, uh, to, to, to 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 the stakeholders in india and all of you anybody can go and visit these lighthouse projects these lighthouse projects were again inaugurated by honorable prime minister on uh, uh, 1st of uh, january um, uh, 2021 this year and uh, in fact while inaugurating he said these lighthouse projects uh, are to be treated as an incubation center and all and he requested invited all whether it is academia whether it is professor mm -hmm. whether it is architects um, engineers and um, policy makers to go and visit these um, the projects and learn from these projects so that these technologies can be adopted as technologies so in fact we have put on this in the syllabus now and in sustainable architecture this is all uh, one subject we are teaching there wonderful so that i must compliment you for that i have also started a course on uh, this i will show you. so these are my few last slides these these are the six projects so uh, i'm sorry i have to hurry it uh, hurry it up so these are the six uh, sites where you can go and in fact you can go to the this website and register yourself as technograhi so again pradhan mantri has introduced a term technograhi in the lines of swachhagrahi and satyagrahi so technograhis are nothing but change agents of innovative technologies so you go free of course you can register as technograhi and then you will get connected with the ministry and you will get the status of these projects live and you can visit these projects whenever you want so again this is a site when prime minister inaugurated so this is a technograhi um, again this is just a site that all the second Sir, actually Uh, the second speaker has very short of time. Yes, yes, yes. I'm just going. Last time, so I just wanted to show you again this slide. More and more states. I am working with Kerala government where they are using lighthouse near this light gauge steel structure already. All these states have more interest and they are uh, using these new technologies. Okay, and this is the last slide. Um, you know, as uh, Nirmita was telling you that unless we teach uh, our students and faculties, so I. BMTPC along with the School of Planning and Architecture has started a course. The next batch is going to be from 27th August, and we have got overwhelming response. In in a, in a span of only six months, we have trained 700 uh, you know professionals regarding. So I I recommend strongly recommend if you are interested and if you want to take a deep dive um, into these technologies, please register for this course, uh, and you will get a certificate which will, which is signed by me and director of SPM. So that that is all. um nirmita sorry thank you. i thank I, you. i sincerely apologize from the speaker the next speaker for encroaching to his time normally i don't do that in but fact, i'm sorry for one or two questions uh, okay. but i think we are now running short of time it was a very okay. informative uh, presentation sir and very interesting also actually i feel sorry to interrupt you in between because it's yeah. a really very interesting presentation that how industry has evolved over a period of time and how we are working on the level 4 now and when uh, many of the people actually does not know that now we have uh, shifted from the conventional to the non conventional type of volumetric construction which has been you know as you have shown the example in 48 hours the building has been constructed uh, in gurgaon i think where you pointed 
So it was really, you know, additive manufacturing also which you have mentioned. And I would like to share here that we have, you know, bought a 3D printer in our own university, which is open to other students also if they want to work on the additive manufacturing and 3D uh, printer so that everybody can make use of it in the region. So it was wonderful to hear you, sir. Thank and you. now I would like to invite um, Colonel Sanjay Shivasa, sir, um, to uh, start his deliberation. Uh, Pragya can just introduce her, introduce him. Thank you. Thank, yes, you. thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank, thank you, sir. I feel a privilege to have veteran Colonel Sanjay Srivastav, sir, among us. It is very difficult to give a brief introduction about his accomplishments, his academic attendances, and his field of exposure. He is a war decorated veteran from Air Defense Branch of Armed Forces. Presently, he is the chairman of Climate Resilient Observing System Promotion Council and is an active climate and an environmental related disaster management expert. He has been instrumental in bringing a paradigm shift in disaster management for responsive and proactive management. He is known as the lightning man of India for his efforts in bringing forward the fact that lightning alone kills a lot of people and should be recognized as a disaster. He holds the credit for his concept of lightning detecting, capacity building, safe grid management. He has been facilitated by United Nations at Geneva in May 2019 for his splendid work. He has played an instrumental role in setting up disaster management systems in Jharkhand and is the advisor to the state for the same. He is also the advisor to the state of Nagaland and Manipur along with various organizations. His areas of expertise are remote sensing, early warning systems, communication and technological interventions in development and disaster management. Besides being a splendid orator, he is a prolific writer and has 32 publications to his credit, especially his publication Annual Lightning Report 2020 and 21, along with Annual Lightning Report 2019 and 20, Mid-Monsoon Lightning Report and Southwest Monsoon Lightning Report, which grabbed a worldwide attention for being exclusive and one of its kind. Sir so will be talking on next generation building technology for military camps and facilities. I welcome you, sir, to share some droplets from the ocean of your knowledge. Thank you so much, Pragya. Is my screen visible? Yes, sir. Can you see the presentation? Yes, sir. At the very outset, I would like to express my thanks to the Gautam Buddha University for giving me this opportunity to speak at this two days of wonderful webinar on the next generation technologies for defense sector. In fact, I would also like to pay my gratitude to Dr. Agrawal. It was so nice hearing him. And since we all have the same guru, Professor A. Sarya, I could well imagine what he is going to present. And therefore, my presentation is not from the point of view of a structural engineer or an architect, but this presentation is basically from the point of view of a military commander, future military requirements, and what is the strategic requirements which we are going to have. This also incorporates the future technology which is there. As far as the building construction technology is concerned, for the defense, the driving factors will remain for future, the threat perception. Now we are going to have multi-dimensional threats, not only from land, air, and sea, but it's going to be from the space. Another thing which are there, which is unwilling, is the technology. It is not only information technology, but it is machine learning, artificial intelligence, augmented reality, and the virtual reality are going to be the order of the day in the future warfare. Stealth and surprise. The way we have gone for our military stations, I cannot say in openly, but yes, 
on the lines of what US and India has. Now we are not going to have over the surface cantonments. So that's going to be the future order of the day. The construction is going to be robust and resilient. Modular and portable are going to be the order of the day. As far as the basic considerations for the next generation building technology is concerned, it depends on the type of base, whether it's Army, Air Force, Navy, four-dimensional or integrated. It's going to be terrain which will dictate. Since India has a variety of terrains, right from Himalayan terrain to the coastal terrain and the planar terrain, river basins, our technology are going to be different for these areas. For Bangladesh, we'll have a different sort of constructions. For western border, for northern border, for Tibetan border, we'll have a different sorts of terrain-based constructions. As far as strategic importance is concerned, it's going to be a weighted defense technology for constructions. Equipment profile is going to play a major role. The type of our equipments are there now in the technical arms, especially armored, air defense, even infantry, our communication equipments, our cyber technologies. We will define, we will need a different type of next generation building. We are going to have special forces, and those special forces are going to be different from the now, now onwards what we have the special forces. We are going to have the state of the art forces, which will not only be physically, mentally, and equipment wise, but even technology wise, there will be super force. So we'll have specialized profile for the next generation constructions. Similarly, our barracks, ammunition dumps, missile dumps, they are going to be different. Communication, artificial intelligence, and virtual reality, and the space-based technology are going to be integral part of the defense constructions. Robotics, laser, innovative disruptive technology is going to be part of it. Our bases are going to be the smart bases. Mission continuity will be the utmost priority. Technology is going to be the disruptive. High tech, it is going to be high tech, but there has to be redundancy. So there will be a situation where without technology, without communication, how we function, that is going to be the part of our redundancy. Innovation, adaptability, and flexibility is going to be the order of the day. If you see in this picture, this is one just example which I have taken from Pentagon, and this is what is going to be there. You can see the modular constructions. You can see the standalone devices which are there. Structural strength. Dr. Salesh Agrawal has given you complete detail, complete encyclopedia of structural strength. Being part of the National Seismic Risk Mitigation Program of the Government of India, where we could design the seismic proof building for India. We have come out with 27 different type of structural strength of the buildings. But the electrical sensitivity part, this is where the BMTPC and the Bureau of Indian Standards we lack. Our rules are governed by the IEC 62305, but there are different technology on the electrical sensitivity. Today we go for the building construction, we talk of the structural strength but we do not talk of the electrical sensitivity. There is no electrical sensitivity test which is conducted. Only soil testing is done. The way lightning and electrical surge is increasing, since our equipments are going to be high tech, they are going to be power driven, we need to have electrical sensitivity as important part of our next generation building technology. In countries abroad, Electrical sensitivity is taken as a very, very important ingredient. You would have seen in the previous presentation, or you can go on the Indian sites, you will not find electrical sensitivity, sensitivity being given due importance. So this is a very, very important point, which I want to drive it today. Pollution. Pollution is going to be a major factor. Dr. Agrawal has highlighted this, and each building has to be pollution-free. So this is... Uh, important aspect is, which is going to drive off next generation building technology for defense sector also. Mobility. Since defense fo forces have to have adequate mobility demand as per the demand of the situation, 
our constructions are also should have the area the entire electrical fitment of your infrastructure is very important in fact power and the web they are going to be your lifeline and they are driven by the electrical sensitivity so if you do not have a proper electrical fitment and electrical protection of your infrastructure whole infrastructure is going to lie redundant and useless so it is very important to have the proper electrical sensitivity based design of the electrical fitments and the electrical protection earthquake resistant these buildings are going to be the code compliant but now the next technology which is there is the performance based constructions the new buildings which we have designed in many states are the performance based constructions what we have inherited from japan the buildings will oscillate but they will not fall so they are basically based on the steel frames on high quality flexible frames various technologies for earthquake resistant like base isolation technology modular and puffed wall steel frame are going to be used the patel bhavan in patna which we have designed is a basically a base isolation technology which is lying an open example for the future future constructions as far as the advantage of smart bases are concerned they are going to be they they are going to have high mobility and logistics based you know the logistics base will be modular or need based health and wellness will be taken care engineering and facilities are smart based modernized the man, 
the management management of energy water environment building and the range of services for military installations which we need security and intelligence is going to be an important part of our entire design of the smart base you can see this is again a picture taken from tech world we are going to have green technology since the climate change is going to be the red alert has already begin, been sounded defense is also going to have the green technology and climate resilient buildings as far as the energy is going to be there energy wise these buildings are going to be self reliant in fact we have already started designing energy reliant buildings the new uh reliant you know building emission we are going to have the list carbon emission laser and intense technology based attack proof buildings are going to be there we are imagining that in future there are going to be various new dimensions of attacks so building have to be proof you know defense proof against these attacks nuclear biological chemical and radiological warfare proof technology is going to be order of the day we are already have started constructing the underground stations which are there and we are going to have more so in future you can see the modular design which are there these need based setups will be there they will be lighter they will be portable economical in time and space as dr subhash dr salens agrawal sir has showed you we need battle worthy constructions because the type of battle what we are going to foresee in future you saw what has happened in afghanistan the us has handed over 11 airfields such good constructions which they created along with the complete arsenals so we need to have flexibility in making the infrastructure move from one place to another so the current situation in the afghanistan gives us a lesson that we should have infrastructure which we should be able to take from one place to another place but it should be battle worthy also so as the warfare as the situation shifts in the battle zone we need a infrastructure which we can immediately create and we can shift so we need a battle worthy lighter portable modular and climate extremities resilient infrastructure since india has a different type of geography we may we may need a infrastructure which is cyclone proof we need a infrastructure which is earthquake proof we need a infrastructure which is flood proof so all those natural hazards are going to be part of our future generation building technology you can see here this modular helipad which is there as part of the building you can see here modular communication center so least number of exposer modular structure easy to lift and that is going to the part of our technology modular barracks this is again a design taken from hotman these barracks are going to be the part of our military cantonments these modular structures will be part of our camps and they can be lifted and they can be replicated in as many numbers they are simple in design they are just based on the steel frames they can be pvc strong you know materials which can be hazard proof and they can be replicated in any number and internal the compartments can be designed as per the need it can be designed into the office it can be designed into the command post it can be designed into the logistic centers it can be designed into your warehouse our warehouse is going to undergo a major change in fact in armed forces our warehouse is they form the backbone of our battle and therefore the modular warehouse and co location of warehouse along with the fighting force is going to be the order of the day we are going to be the less atom heavy and more punch line based future technology force and if you see here in this you can see the docks you can see the 
area, you can see the storage area, you can see the shipping area, you can see the outbound docks. So similar structure will be there. So smart warehousing will be part of our complete warehousing and only need-based vehicle and movement will be there. So this sort of assembly area, base warehousing will be there. Similarly, in the forward zones, we'll have a smaller warehouses, which will be modular and need-based. The company structure of warehouse, you can see it's a steel frame based. It's energy reliant and it is, you know, high tech and it can withstand any type of attack and it can be easily moved. So such type of structures are going to be part of our armed forces. We'll get another requirements for our mobility and strength in the battle are as airstrips. Airstrips are going to be different, not like what we have. The current existing airstrips will continue for the civilian and the military use, but we'll have immediate rollout strips which are going to be there in the future. Jetties. Jetties what we have, huge structures at present. The future generation gen jetties which have come up, they are going to be easy to use, modular, and they can be taken away. So we are going to have a modular, flexible, adaptable, and mobile facilities. Command posts, command control, communication, and virtual reality centers, they are going to be order of the day. And instead of having land-based systems, we, are, we can also have now space-based systems. So far, we had AVAX. AVAX was just an aircraft-based. But with the spacecraft coming in the future, we are going to have space-based command posts. I'll just take you through to a video, which is from the, again, Deloitte, which will show you the future technology. There are a lot of research which is going on across in the world on this technology. And It's said that we always fight the last war. So today, more than ever, we must look ahead to tomorrow's challenges. Our world is changing rapidly. With that change can come new threats, but also new opportunities. This can be especially true for military bases, the backbone of our nation's fighting force, and home to the families of those who serve. That's why it's imperative, as we prepare for the challenges of the future, that we do not constrain our bases with technology of the past. Imagine a smart base built to improve readiness, enhance mission accomplishment, and provide greater quality of life for the force and their families. A base with its own source of power, running securely on or off the grid, ensuring mission continuity, even in a crisis. Envision automated security screening at access gates to reduce congestion, Smart sensors that efficiently manage facilities to maximize energy, water, and resources. Secure, dependable internet connectivity to ensure seamless collaboration. A smart base can facilitate better security decisions, respond to emergency events, and connect us to the information we need, all at the speed of digital. Smart bases aren't science fiction anymore. The technology is already available in your city. With this, I come to the end of my presentation. I would request, in case there is any question, I would like to answer that. <laughs>